So I said I'd try this new format and immediately Logseek got to work and released 10.1. So back at it, doing another look at the changelog and there were a lot of small fixes in this one. Not of course a lot of features, but this is definitely more of a bug fix release. Looking at the changelog, I'm gonna skip the thanks, but I'm doing a shout out at the end of the video and let's just immediately get to the fixed issues. So the first entry on the fixed issues bit is a new search related issues, which is of course obvious if you change the search around, then people will find those edge cases. Looking at the GitHub, there's a whole bunch of issues that were getting fixed. Things that are like small, but you know, happen over time. I've definitely seen a couple of these popping up when I was using the new search function in the last week, and I'm glad they have been taken care of pretty quickly. Let's see what the other patch one was about. As you can see, there's some performance issues like search for files can crush Logseek, meaning that if you have like a lot of files, which definitely happens if you, for example, have like a Git setup, which Git uses a lot of small files inside the .git directory. Glad like a whole bunch of these small things are getting fixed. And this is of course why having this beta program is so important. Then the second fixed issue was one that I mentioned in my last video, which is the shortcut icons. I can show that. So if you do a control K here, you see here in the bottom, it says as like Mac button, enter, and I don't have that. Another thing that I had is the show more on the top here that also says Mac command, arrow down. I don't have a Mac command. I can use the windows, but it's not what I'm used to. I'm used to like doing a control down and I can't. Uh, but if I do windows down, then I can't either because that will resize my screen. So that was definitely a problem. Luckily in the new version that I have here, you see it's fixed. So it says slash the search filter results. It says control everywhere. And now if I go here and I do control down, it opens and shows everything. So excellent fix, definitely something I was missing in the last release. Then another problem that we see was the default search length, meaning that if you were searching for pages, now for example, if I search Logseek, I'll get a lot of pages and it only shows 10 and I can unfold it by using the mouse here. And then after 10, it stops. I have more than 10 pages about Logseek for sure. So if I go to this one and I do the same thing, now I am using two instances of Logseek in the same backend, never do this, stuff could break. Uh, I'm taking a risk here, I have backups, no worry about it. But if I open it here, then you can see like 99 plus, this was obviously a bug and glad it's fixed because people might think that they are missing pages when it was absolutely not the case. Then the next fix is one of those things that I started to notice when I'm searching within the page. So if you folded stuff in, then you wouldn't get that result. So what happened was that if you had something folded like this and you would search, you wouldn't get brought to the page. It just couldn't find it in the page and you would just be stuck here. Now, if I search for it and I say folding block, which is the example I have here. So it's a simple demo folding the block itself. And I click on this, it will focus in on the block and it will find the relevant data, even if it's collapsed, which is an improvement because, you know, finding stuff. And if you're searching for something and it is unfolded, so I'm, I'm doing it again, I'm going to folding block. Then you'll notice if I click on it, it will go to the page and scroll down. And so this scrolling didn't happen if it was folded. And of course the cleanest method here is to go to it when it's unfolded and go to the inside the block when it isn't folded, which is exactly what I expect to happen. I don't want things to be suddenly fold unfolded for me. Another one that seems obvious looking back at it, and that is that you couldn't search for whiteboard. So in the old version, if I press Ctrl K, you don't see whiteboard in the uh, limitations. So let me see here, search for pages, current page, block commands and files, no whiteboard there. If I go to the new version, I press Ctrl K and I do slash, then you see that hey, there's whiteboards in the bottom and you're missing the files, but it's also there when I press control down because it only shows five items and now there are six. So bit on the fence here, if it shouldn't just always show all six of them when you're doing slash anyway, but you can reach every single item when that's the important bit. Then we have some theme color issues. This is usually small stuff, blocks not getting colored that are supposed to get colored. If we go here, we see examples where things are pointed out like, hey, this is still gray instead of the accent color, same here. Small changes, but definitely will make it look more consistent. This one was annoying. The block UUD shouldn't be added to recents. So if you go to the old version and I do a control K, you already see it here. I do control K and then you see these UU ideas popping up here. And of course, that's not what you want. First of all, I can't read UU ideas. They're cluttering up my recent space. 
So going to the new version, I do control K and you see in recent only pages and names from which I know, you know, that they were useful. For example, this bracket, which was a typo of me creating a page that I deleted and then Butterfingers. So the next issue is limited to mobile. And I already noticed that one is that if you open the sidebar, it was see through, making it really hard to use because you had text through text and deciphering it was more of a memory game than actually looking at it. I'll capture it on my phone, post it in here, and then right after I'll update my Android version because this was annoying the heck out of me. Now I'll skip the next one because I'm gonna show that right after because opening my graph will make my laptop very, very slow. But the other one was the fix and or simple query containing strings, which was a long standing search issue, meaning that if you had a combination of and and or with any type of full string, so quotes around it, you'd get weird results or broken queries, meaning that it was practically useless. Now, let me see if I can see the actual bug on GitHub and talk about that a bit. So if you look at this, there's like a whole example on places where this went wrong with like item types getting combined and then not giving you the right results. This was the main thing that you had. You get like a malformed query resulting like in extra brackets in there. And then of course you might be able to fix it. But as you can see, this is definitely on the advanced side of it. So not something that was easy to fix for people. It has been outstanding for long. I remember looking at this Half a year ago, maybe even Is it that long ago already. January, so like over a year. This was not as easy to fix as some people might think. But what you can see here is that if you like combine things like tags and text, things just started going wonky. And this was, I think I had a couple of queries where I used this and I'm glad I can now, but now I need to go back to usage of it. So the one that I skipped was the incorrect node edge. And I don't use the full graph very often because I have a lot of pages, so it's slow and it doesn't give me a lot of insight, but I am glad it's getting fixed. So you can see when you click through this, I go to the uh, fix and then I go towards the actual issue you see that the lines weren't getting drawn and i'm gonna go try and see if i can show this but my laptop is going to go really really slow so i'm doing a graph view now and that's definitely going to take a while i'm also going to start it here on the new version and then we'll just have to wait for a bit luckily you don't have to wait because i can do editing magic now the change is pretty obvious if i go towards my graph and i zoom in you don't see any lines here. You don't see any connections. And then if I go to the new version, this is fixed. And as you can see, it really becomes that spider web of interconnected notes. Then, of course, a lot of small translation fixes, which is always welcome. So I thought I'd end these changelog reviews on a high note by doing a quick shout out to the people that were thanked. So that's a pleasure, Ulysses, KS, QSF, Roktaki, Up, and Vivian. All thanks to your contributions for Logseek. You're awesome. Everybody watching this is awesome. And see you in the next one.